Yes. So what is this ADSB thing all about? It's about plane tracking, right? To be specific, automatic dependent surveillance broadcast is all about radio signals that aircraft send out. They usually include their GPS position, altitude, ground speed, and direction, among other things. What's interesting here is that the data is sent out automatically, typically once a second, not just when probed by a ground station. And the data is broadcast. It is sent out unencrypted in a robust, well-defined and standardized format and on an open radio frequency, 1090 megahertz. While some people refer to this as some form of radar, which is even the name of some of the companies engaged in this space, the system explicitly is not radar based. It is a radio broadcast from the aircraft that doesn't require an active ground radar to provide information. ADSB has been introduced to dramatically improve flight safety as it not only allows passive ground stations to receive data from aircraft, it also allows aircraft to identify other aircraft in the vicinity. Depending on how high a plane is flying and on local geography, these signals can be received on the ground from tens and often even hundreds of miles away. But mountains and valleys and even large buildings can limit the range, so the local geography around the receiver does matter. In most countries, planes that are flying in certain airspaces are required to send out ADSB data. For example, in the US, ADSB is required near major airports and above a certain altitude. In Europe, it's required for instrument flight plans or for heavy or fast airplanes, and in many other locations simply based on altitude. Realistically, at this point, most airplanes send out ADSB data by default. And as part of the design of this technology, since it's a safety mechanism for air traffic, the data is easy to receive and easy to decode. Pretty much anyone within line of sight can receive the data, and surprisingly, you can often receive the data even if there are some obstacles in the way. Indoor receivers are absolutely possible. As we all know, radio signals get weaker indoors, but they don't just disappear. As I said earlier, geography, hills, valleys, large buildings do create obstructions. And the lower a plane flies, the closer it has to be to the antenna in order to be received and the more likely it becomes that geography gets in the way. As a result, if you want to create comprehensive live maps of the aircraft above us, a lot of receivers and a lot of antennas are needed. And in order to combine the data from all these antennas and to make sense of it in the context of maps, there are more than two dozen so-called aggregators who collect data from many receivers or feeders around the globe. Usually the basic maps based on the data are publicly available. The most well-known ones are probably some commercial companies like FlightAware or FlightRadar24. There's that word radar again. But there are also quite a few community-driven projects that do this in order to create freely available data, not in order to make money. And while some of the commercial aggregators send out free antenna kits to people who are willing to send them data, all of the other aggregators rely on people like you and me to send them data, which you can do for very little money, as I've shown in another video. As I've mentioned a few times, given geography and the other obstacles, even if there are others with antennas near you, having more data always improves the overall availability and ability to accurately map the aircraft above us. This is especially true with those aircraft that don't send GPS information. While most of us generally simplify things by just talking about ADSB when it comes to tracking aircraft using radio data on the 1090 MHz frequency, there are a number of other standard formats that can also be broadcast at that frequency. Some older planes simply don't have GPS on board, but data about their altitude, speed and direction is still being sent out. And for example, military aircraft often don't send out their GPS information, even they of course have it. At least in some countries or regions, that's the case. But math is fun, and once you have at least four antennas receiving data from the same aircraft, even without GPS information, you can calculate fairly accurate location information for that aircraft, a process that is called multilateration or MLAT. And there, having more antennas makes a huge difference. It's actually a requirement. You cannot do these calculations unless you have at least four antennas receiving data from that aircraft, and having more antennas usually makes the MLET data 
even more accurate. So whether you live in an underserved area between major population centers, are located near any airport, big or small, or are in an area already well served by other receivers, there's always value in adding another antenna to the mix, especially when feeding the community operated aggregators like ADSB.LOL or Airplanes.Live or, or some of the others. Many of these open aggregators make the resulting data available for analysis and research, yet another benefit of supporting this cause. Please take a look at some of the other videos that I've released about how to set up a feeder, how to get the most out of a local feeder, and how to understand the information that is shown on the live map. And please don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment.